All right, we're making it short and sweet like a Rice Krispie treat in three, two, one. And thanks for tuning in to the Guardian Hub podcast. This is episode number 235, and we talk about Destiny and Season of the Witch and Rice crispy Treats, which there's some restaurant or fast food place I went to once where um, they are large Rice crispy Treats, not quite short. <laughs> They're like, you know, if you made like a batch at home, it'd be like literally a fourth of the pan if you did one of those large rectangular pans is what they give you. I think the real big question about a Rice Krispie treat, regular Rice Krispies or chocolate Rice Krispies? I mean, either's fine. I don't mind that too much. The only thing I would say is I feel like the marshmallow meltiness pairs a little bit better with regular Rice Krispies. When you go with chocolate, it's a little bit more on the chocolate flavor. You don't get to appreciate just the malty vanilla marshmallow flavor. But I, I have nothing against the chocolate ones. I like those also. What about you? I, I'm a chocolate fan myself, so interesting chocolate. And then I know people sometimes do the fruity pebbles, and oh, that just that gets sounds insane. Good. I don't know. I'm just kind of a purist. See, the thing about some of those again, it's like fruity pebbles are fine on its own. You don't need marshmallow around it. But Rice Krispies, it's kind of like that savory multi flavor with the marshmallow. That's what made them good in the first place. So I feel like when you're doing the chocolate or the fruity pebbles one, it's just too sweet. It's too candy ish versus like a, just a legit traditional dessert. I'm all about them sweets though. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of sweets, one that is very popular right now, and we just picked up a bag if you have a Costco. It's um, okay. I don't know if anyone knows what I'm talking about. Costco's had them for a long time. Other places have them too, but it's the same company. It's the Mark Edwards brand. And you know how they, have you seen those um, chocolate almonds that have kind of like a coconut flavor and then they're dark chocolate on the outside? Just little round balls. Uh, They they dip a Coke, sorry, they dip an almond in like a coconut cream and then a chocolate over it. So it's like an almond joy bite. That sounds delicious. Never had those. Oh, they're amazing. Never had them. Well, anyways, now they made Girl Scout cookie, the Samoa cookies, into the little round, or I guess they call them the Caramel Delights in some areas of the U.S. They've turned those into little small little round bites, and they're in a bag you should get at Costco. Mm. They are amazing. <laughs> now, now I need to go get candy. We should. Yep. Uh, we'll we'll continue right after this. Kidding. Do, do, do. Put in some music here, Sen, when you edit it. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> all right we're back how was it did you enjoy it uh yes in my mind i enjoyed it very well <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> what is new with you uh, though? well that is new and then i don't know what else um that's interesting to talk about on the show do 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 oh i know i mean this is just this won't be of interest to too many people but there's a famous Mexican, I wouldn't say chain, they only have about six locations, a little family-run restaurant group and that started in Southern California called El Cholo. In fact, it is the oldest Mexican restaurant, at least in California. I don't know compared to the rest of the United States. It was the first Mexican restaurant created. So guess what year that would have to be to be the first Mexican restaurant in California? Any kind of estimation of... 1931. 1923. Ah, I was close. (laughs) Still pure guessing. It's 100 years old this year. 100 years old. And they've only been in Southern California, and their first expansion 
that they opened their seventh location is in Salt Lake City, Utah. And so I grew up in California. I loved that place. And now they've come to Utah. And my mind was blown the other day. And <laughs> I didn't even find out about it ahead of time. So I had to wait. I found out about it once they opened. So we went right away. And it was so good to have that again. So nice. El Cholo. For anyone what did you get? Is, so I got uh, the chicken mole enchiladas. You know, the mole sauce is kind of like that dark, kind of like a chocolate enchilada sauce. Really, really good. And yeah, the question it, is, do they do a birria? <laughs> no. Yeah, it's, it's not called birria. It's called birria. <laughs> Whatever. I'll go I know what birria. you meant, though. I know what you meant, because that's all the popular thing now. That's a different style. Most restaurants don't do that. That's usually more like a street food. You can find that at restaurants, but usually you'll find that more like at fast food places or taco trucks or things like that. Which is surprising, because it's not a quick thing to make. You actually I have know. to. Yeah, uh, I know. It's Cook a it forever. <laughs> right. It's a quite in depth process. Well, and mole sauce is too. Um, mole sauce comes from indigenous people that lived in the area of Mexico before it was colonized by Spain and everything. It actually comes from like Aztec Indian culture and gets passed down into Mexican cuisine. And it was served to like the gods of the Aztec people. And it's because it's this. It's like this sauce that you cook all day. It's like you grind up nuts and chocolate and raisins and jalapenos and tomatoes, and you make this really rich, slightly sweet sauce that's very, very rich and takes like all day to cook if you do it right. <laughs> and then you put that on top of enchiladas or just some chick plain chicken or whatever, and it's really, really good. Nice. I'm gonna have to get. I'm gonna have to get me some Mexican soon. Uh-huh. And you need some legit Mexican, not this Tex Mex stuff that everyone No, I <laughs> I don't shame. I like Tex Mex too, but like It's not the same. I, it you no, know, it's not the same, but it's good. But I mean like you know you have legit me Mexican food if it's a regional thing. Like, oh, our restaurant is from the Oaxaca region of Mexico or something like that. And then then it's legit, you know. Um they have they make there are enchilada sauce from scratch, whether it's a mole or a red sauce or green sauce, or they'll they'll make the burrilla from scratch all day, or or you know, there's just little touches, or you can get things like molcajete and like the those stone bowls that has all the good stuff in it. So good, good cool. stuff. Not just some burritos from Taco Bell, which has its place <laughs> also. <laughs> all right, fourth okay. meal. One one last thing I have to say about Taco Bell. Um, I wanted it the other night, and I really like their, their nacho fries that they have on and off. Like, they always say, we're taking them away, and then they come back. We're taking them away, and they come back. Anyways, they're back on the menu right now. But I've never thought their just bean burrito was, like, the best. I like Del Tacos better and Taco Time and stuff. But I still like to get it as just kind of like a side item. Like, I'll get some really cheesy thing, like a quesadilla or, like, one of those big burritos or whatever that has all the junk in it. But I just like a like a finisher or a side. I'm just a classic bean and cheese burrito, right? And I always say to order it with extra onions because Taco Bell's so funny. Like they'll put like the slightest amount of onions on it. So people that don't like onions always have to say no, no onions. But then I'll say I like I want like extra onions because they don't do enough to be considered like a regular onion amount. Like if you were to ask for it at Del Taco or something like that. And so I like to order with extra onions. Well, their beans by themselves, you know, are nothing to shake a stick at. It's they're pretty bleh tasting. But every year they put and I understand they're not gonna put a lot of cheese on it to make it, you know, cheaper and stuff, but every year they put less cheese and less sauce on it. This time I got the bean burrito, it was just pure beans. I don't think I could catch any sauce on it or any cheese. So annoying because the sauce and the cheese mixed together is what makes the beans taste better in my opinion yeah it's the so what am i stuff. what am i gonna have to do send order it with extra sauce and extra cheese every time just so i can get it with a normal amount you should order it with uh mayonnaise do they have mayonnaise there no no so <laughs> your little tricky to do thing didn't work <laughs> <laughs> i tried oh man actually my I wife like likes bean burritos but i do not yeah, well, I'm liking theirs less now. 
Any yeah, interesting go, food things you've had recently? Uh, we did go to a, uh, well, we actually did have a Mexican restaurant last weekend, weekend, a few days back, I think is what it was. Um, and I ended up getting, what did I get? I got uh, some steak taco kind of deal. It was pretty good. Although I kind of wish there was more, like I wanted to order like some sauce, but I ended up just using some uh like fire salsa that they had uh, mixed up, fresh mixed fire salsa. And it was spicy, but it was pretty good. And fire um, sauce. Yeah, I think they I think they called it fire or something like that. Or something to do with like spicy. It was like really green, but it had really good flavor and a lot of heat to it. Mm. Sounds good. And then of course the uh, normal eat too many chips and a lot of cheese dip. Yeah, <laughs> cheese dip, yeah. Yep, my wife always wants to get the cheese dip. I'm just like, no, dog, the salsa and guacamole is where it's at. I mean, cheese dip is good, but I don't know. I feel like the guacamole is way better. But I'm not much of a guac fan great. myself. I do it in moderation. <laughs> I like it, but I won't, I won't go out of my way to order it. Mm, yeah. Guacamole. And I'm looking at the chat. Mole, he posted a GIF. Of... <laughs> People, go oh, back and check this out. Powers. Go to our podcast live channel. You can see the chat on the side without joining a live audio chat. Austin Powers, when he was doing mole, 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 mole. <laughs> when you were talking about it, it was making me think of that. I could resist. No doubt. Well, weekend's almost come up. Um, Thursday night, as usual, as we record these, um, it feels kind of like just a time in my area to chill and relax. We've had quite swing in temperatures where rain has come through, and we're now in the 40s and 50s for the high. All of a sudden, it went from 70s to low 80s, constant to just 40s to 50s. Actually, we're in the 80s a little bit today. Yeah. We're going to go back up to like higher 50s, maybe 60 again next week. But um, it's definitely that fall weather. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pumpkin spice weather. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The one few pumpkin things I like are actual pumpkin pie or like pumpkin filling that you can get that they put into like empanadas or things like that. Because. Actual pumpkin flavor, like pumpkin puree, pumpkin stuff, when you add all the gimmicky, I understand why they add like the cinnamon and the allspice and the clove to it because that gives the pumpkin a good flavor because it's such this savory thing by itself. It needs some sweetness. But when they have pumpkin spice flavoring into like drinks and other stuff, it is like ugh, all I can taste is the clove. The spice. And the spice. And it's so stupid to me. I don't get why it's like such a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I enjoy it, even though it is gimmicky. The Now, there are some pumpkin drinks out there that I can't, can't do. But uh, Duncan has a uh, nutty pumpkin. It's uh, decent. I think it's more of like a hazelnut pumpkin spice fusion kind of deal. And then, uh, of course... The traditional Starbucks PSL. Like, I can do those every now and again. Like, I won't go out of my way to order them every day. But if somebody's going, I'm definitely going to get one. Do you like it? Do you think because it's, oh, it's only here a limited time, so I got to get it? Or do you legit like pumpkin anyways? Like pumpkin pie stuff? Like, I do like pumpkin pie anyway. And okay. um, I, I don't mind the extra, the spiciness with the cinnamon and the clove and, and such in yeah. there. That, to me, adds a little more flair to the drink. Um, I don't know. I don't like no, bland, well, that's legit at least. stuff. <laughs> it's so funny because also pumpkin pies can be found fairly easy year round, at least the frozen versions, which defrost perfectly well and they taste good. And I've even seen some stores that have like pumpkin pie year round kind of next to some other pies. But we tend to think, oh, we only get to have pumpkin in September, October. In November, you know, and 
everyone goes crazy this time of year when the drinks now the drinks do only come out seasonally or the beers i've tried a pumpkin beer before now that actually is okay because i feel like the pumpkin spice flavor kind of offsets the malty barley flavor of the beer i wouldn't say it's my favorite drink i would not go out of my way to get one but i'm okay with it (laughs) oh yeah yeah we did some destiny stuff this weekend yes yes and you weren't here last week right yeah i don't know if you heard our discussion or was it the week before where we were talking about like weapons and stuff i think it was a couple weeks ago but this really quick i just want to give a quick follow-up this discussion's been going on forever because the senate nomad came out with a video a little while ago and then Fallout Plays did a reaction video to it, which I liked his, and I posted it in our Discord under Destiny Talk. But a Senate Nomad was saying about how there's... He put out this video a few weeks ago at most, two or three weeks ago, and about is there too many weapons in the game? And I'm trying to remember, Sin, but haven't we said that for a while? I mean, even if we didn't agree, even if not everyone agreed with it or not, I know I have. And now the streamers are just catching on. <laughs> so I'd like to take credit <laughs> for a it's trendy. Idea. <laughs> it's trendy. That's why they're, they're jumping on board because it's trendy. Now it's a hot topic, but I swear I said it even before it was trendy. I, I've been I thinking know. this for months <laughs> at least. Well, I mean, it, it's obvious, right? When you have a vault that's for, for most of us that have been playing a while, have a vault that's nearly full most of the time. Regardless of it, if well, it's I don't have a full vault, or not. and I still think we have too many weapons. But regardless, well, either I way, mean, full vault or not, you can have the opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's true. There are so many weapons out there, and for the most part, they're all kind of meh. They're nothing special about them, except for some maybe one-offs. And I, I've been I've been set in my ways. Like I found the couple guns that I use, and I swap them in and out with a couple different other weapons depending on the encounters that I'm playing, and that's what I go with. Yeah. And really, the only reason I swap them out is if right now because you need something for anti barrier overload or unstoppable, and you need to have a weapon to to be able to take them down. So I yeah, use those, those are the wild card though. I don't think those count yeah. as much. Yeah. Those are just like a key you need for doing a certain encounter. In fact, there's so many other ways to do those things now. There could be a pain, but you don't even have to use weapons for anti-barrier and stop. You can do like Correct. abilities if you have them procced right. Or grenades yeah, or stuff. Yeah, very much so. And But for the most part, I think uh, the, I have Overload and Unstop because I use a Fusion and um, I use those for the most part to do what I need to do this season. And I swap over to an auto rifle if I need to do uh, anti-barrier. And I just have a perpetualis that I have on my character, and that's what I swap over to, and that's what I use. Yeah. Um, I don't have a, a go-to in that regards. I'm sure I have something in my vault that I could use that probably would be a little bit better. But I really don't have a need to. There's, there's no need for min-maxing that for, for me. Mm-hmm. Um, now, and then on the topic of because this has been kind of, it's related, but not a thousand percent the same thing, but um, do these roles really matter for PvE versus PvP? And as Senate Nomad said, basically, no. Again, with the caveats, you can't really count the anti-barrier unstop thing. That's just a key that you need for certain things. Um, Fallout's reaction to that was like, I generally agree, you can use whatever for PVE. It doesn't matter unless you're trying to like do speed running and raids or some crazy super high end thing to shave off time. Then you might need a more optimized role on a certain weapon or something. But what are your thoughts? Because I think you got to have to define what it means by like, do they matter? I'm going to have more input on this, but do you think Sin like do roles not matter in PvP and do they only matter in PV sorry, do they not matter in PvE and only matter in PvP? Um uh, and for the most part I don't think they probably really matter in PvP either. And and really Ooh, a lot of people would at least disagree with you on that one. <laughs> well they can because for the fact that maybe for the fact maybe for the time to kill, right? If you're yeah. looking to 
you know, have a competitive advantage, yeah. but that competitive advantage would almost relate to speed running a raid. You're getting a competitive advantage against a PVE activity by having better roles so you can speed through it or clear it more effectively. Yeah. So I think for the most part, the roles don't matter what activity you're playing. I, I love that you're saying this. I, I don't know how to feel about it. And I, but it's kind of true. Like, if you put it this way, too, like for probably a majority of the players in PvP, a lot of these roles don't matter too much because it's probably more your own personal skill that's getting in the way versus a role on a weapon. In fact, I see so many times people playing in PvP and they're like, oh, they have that weapon. That's why they beat me. No, probably they're a better player. That's why they beat you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? And. It's it maybe only matters as much when you're at the level of someone else. If you're comparing exact high skill to another high school player, there's really no way to exactly have two people the same. But let's say you could, and then if someone had a a weapon with a you know extra damage perk, so they could do three body shots or sorry, three head one body versus four head one body, then then yeah, that's where a roll would matter. If you're hitting all your shots if you're a good player. But right. this is interesting you say that. Okay, so they matter somewhat. In PvE, how much do you think they matter, or in your opinion, or not much at all? Um, well, let's take, uh, let's take my Callus Mini Tool for an, an example here. Crafted with Enhanced Incandescent, right? Yes, in this case, the role will matter, right? Because Incandescent with... Um, its ability to be able to, um, you know, spread a scorch and, and help be able to melt ads a little bit quicker. Yes, that part of it matters. Yeah, especially when it's it part makes... of a build and everything, right? Correct. So, yeah, it's going to help you clear things more effectively. So, in that case, yes, it matters. But is it needed? No, probably not. You could probably still do a f- yeah, that's effective what to... damage otherwise. That's why these arguments are kind of like so moot in a way until we define what people mean. Is it needed or is it wanted? (laughs) You know, these are two different (laughs) meanings, right? Are they really needed? Of course, nothing's needed, right? And in fact, unless we're speed running, a lot of us, once we get familiar with the raid or even people that aren't familiar and they get carried by others, you can run really almost any weapon in the raid. It won't be the best DPS option maybe, but it's really not needed, but that's just kind of silly to say. Of course, you're going to want to do good DPS if you want to help people out. Of course, you want to have fun, <laughs> see things explode. Of course, you want to maybe do a build when you can. It's not needed or required, so when you're a new player, don't stress about this. But when you can get a better role, then you go for it. And, um, you know, even if it's RNG-based, it's like... Uh, yeah, it's not needed. You shouldn't stress about it. Don't stress about killing yourself over getting RNG rolls, but you should still strive to go for those at some point because once you do, once you get that weapon that's 1% better, let's just say that to be fair, than the, the other one, well, guess what? Now you're having more fun because you're taking that slightly better roll into the raid and you're seeing things go down quicker. You're seeing more explosions. You're seeing this and that. And guess what also? The faster you can kill stuff in PvE is also important. Just like PvP, because the faster you can kill stuff, the less likely you're going to die, because they're not going to kill you. (laughs) So, there you go. There you go. You know, there's a lot of ways you can can stay alive in in raids and and playing the game of Destiny. And a lot of times ones that people catch on too early on and rely on too much is healing things like well of radiance you know of course there's other reasons to do that during dps we get the 25 percent buff but let's say someone's a new player and they're using that in all the missions and they're using this all over uh, you know they're new it's good it helps them stay alive but don't use that as a crutch okay then the next level i feel like is learning positioning Learning, having an exit plan. You're you're running in. There's a bunch of enemies in this little area, and you're starting to see your bar go down. Well, quickly back up and jump to the right where that rock was, so you can hide behind something. You have 
have spatial awareness so you know where you can go to get away from the ads as quickly as possible. And it's not always possible. I, I have really good spatial awareness and then I'm in a sticky situation I'm like, ooh, I can't get out of this one and then it's annoying and then I die. But at least try to have that plan ahead of time. So use cover. And then I think the highest level, a more advanced player technique is offensive techniques. Again, what I was just saying. So, you know, you can have these crazy arc builds on Warlock and other characters too, but like all this damage output is coming out and ads are going down quicker. And guess what? If they're going down quicker, you're not going to die as much because they're not around to shoot you. So just my little tip of the week. <laughs> and just the tip. Just the tip. <laughs> All right, but definitely let us know what you think, people. Um, I think defining the question is almost more important than, you know, what the answers are. Tell us what you think. You know, obviously, we don't need to, but but let us know. Like, do you feel like, well, if you don't need to, then it's just a fun way to chill and play. Like, I don't want to go for extra rolls, but also for the people that, you know, do have some time and then get a better roll, then... Uh, it's fun, right? You can do a little bit better. Exactly. All right. That was follow-up because I knew we'd have a sh- shorter show anyways. Um, you'd been doing anything interesting in the game? We did uh, a raid last night. We did that raid last night uh, and what else? I'm playing competitive right now and this is definitely Live interesting. Update. Are you winning? It's not- no, <laughs> it's been awful, <laughs> honestly. This is the first, the first time I've really played since uh, the raid, actually. I tried playing a little bit uh, prior to the raid, uh, raid night on Saturday, and I kept getting uh, disconnected randomly and kicked back to orbit, and I got frustrated with the game and hopped in Diablo. Uh, it was just kind of, uh, I don't want to keep doing this because I was losing progress in everything that I was playing, and I was like, no. Trying to do strikes, trying to do gambit, and getting kicked. It's not Weird. I don't think that's a general problem these days. Maybe it was something seasonal or regional in your area or something. It Internet could be. Issues. I mean, I had no issues on Diablo. Like I hopped on different yeah, games. Diablo no doesn't issues. need Diablo doesn't need ping though. It just needs a connection to say you're on. I'm going to give you ping. <laughs> you can't compare Diablo and Destiny if you're having internet issues. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm pretty sure it wasn't me overall because I had no issues with anything else, even with the other stuff like, you know, even websites downloading your porn. Twitch. Yep, that too. Okay. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> the uh, other hubs on the net. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I mean, I haven't been doing too much Destiny. I hit the Halloween event hard the first week. This, this week, I haven't hit it as hard. I still want to potentially finish my pulse rifle kills and strike playlist activities. But if I don't finish it, I won't care that much. I did get my memento for the black leather thing, so that's pretty cool. And I got to decide what weapon to put it on now. Well, I still need to get that. That's worth getting. It's not that hard to get that. It really isn't. Well, do you need the masks too? And I don't even know. Is oh, there an actual yeah. triumph for it? Uh, yeah, but they're not hard to get either. Um, so let's see what masks they were. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, now that I have them, it went away, so I forget what the tramps were, but I don't know. I feel like I got them pretty easily. Oh, I still the, only have thing, the only thing that's hard to get is the ritual activities, which gives you the callus mask, but that's not needed for this thing we're talking about. And then... Headless ones for the tormentor mask. What does it say you have to do for that? Uh, you just have to just kill the headless ones. ones. Yeah, yeah, that's not. And then bad. you need was it Mara Solv mask? No, you don't need that one. Then you also need the um. See, come on, Sam. I posted in this Discord like a week ago. I don't I remember know. it anymore. I know mm-hmm. you have to have the other mask that you need is. Let me scroll up. Nimbus. Nimbus. Yeah, what does that one say? You have to do for Nimbus mask. Uh, that I have already, but I haven't gone See, in there. Yeah. And where is the um because that you, you posted that quick link in Destiny, but is there an actual triumph for it somewhere in game that counts it down, or is it just kind uh, of like a hidden thing? Well, it does count it down, but it doesn't tell you what they are. <laughs> so do try to just open this thing that I posted so you'll know. You basically you gotta do fallen 
saber strike with the Clovis spray mask on. And then you got to do 100 kills of Neo Muna with the Nimbus mask. Both of those are dead easy. And then the third thing is you got to get 25 finishers in Legend version Haunted Sectors with the Tormentor mask. Tormentor. So once you get the Tormentor mask, just 25 finishers, that's not even too bad. I did it in a couple runs. Yeah. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. They were smart with that, at least um, making it eh, something that anyone could do a a fourth to a third of the way through everything else and then just call it a day if you want after that. Yeah, for sure. Yep. All right. A couple things here. We do have the twid, but also we have a weapons article uh, from yesterday, the day before. Ooh, I, I just want to that. give a couple things in it. Well, I posted it in the Discord too, Sin. Ooh, right, still missed see. it. Uh, well, I'll just say a couple things. Oh, I can give you the link if you want, or you can just go to Bungie's yeah. website. Let me put this in the chat. I have too many screens up. You have too many screens up? There you go. Yeah, but not on my PC, on my Mac. <laughs> All right. Let me see. Okay, so there's that, and then I'm going to go through this here. They just talk about how things are getting buffs like auto rifles, and they went through their thought process of why it's getting a buff. But the TLDR on that is auto rifles next season will be getting increased damage against minor combatants by 10%. Okay. I didn't think like they were too bad against miners, and 10% isn't a huge buff, so there you go. Pulse rifles, though, are getting an increased damage against miners and majors by 12%. That they needed, I feel like. I hate using pulse rifles. I feel like they're kind of weak. Yeah. In PvP, they're fine, but I think yeah. PvE, it's not yep. so much. A little Glaives are to be honest with you. Glaives are doing a bunch of stuff again to make them better, so people will use them. Increased projectile speed by 30%. Increased projectile damage by 25%. And, of course, decreasing it in PvP, but in PvE, they're trying to make it good. Um, and there's something about the shield damage on Glaives that I don't care about. <laughs> um, snipers, they're increasing again. Increased PvE damage with a flat buff of 15%. This also applies to exotic sniper rifles that use heavy ammo. So, we already, you know, Whisper and other snipers were already kind of usable like we used whisper for a raid race on oryx with another 15 percent buff sniper rifles could be getting a little more meta next season yeah i wouldn't mind using them again yeah especially whisper it's fun maybe not so much on crota but other places (laughs) yeah other places uh like even maybe like garden boss or something you know Okay, here's a huge buff in general. I remember Vex Mythoclass was really good for a while, and then they nerfed it a bunch. Well, they are increasing minor combatants by 10%. That's fine. But bosses by 25%. I don't know that we're going to be really using this on bosses too much, except for in raids, other than maybe like... I could see it being used as a Swiss Army knife, though, like in Lost Sectors, Strikes, other things like that but also t- champions by 200% if you have the linear fusion rifle mod and it's on any champion this is going to be a swiss army weapon they said where you can use this if you have the linear fusion rifle mod you can use this on any type of champion anti barrier whatever you know the unstop overload so this is going to be cool i'm excited about using vex a little more Next season. Yeah, I uh, that two hundred percent linear is kind of intriguing. Yeah. Yeah, and thanks for reminding me, you do have to be in linear fusion rifle mode. Correct. Uh which makes sense, I guess. It's just that way they can get people because I would no one really used that mode, right? It just wasn't worth it. Uh, but now it makes sense. It's one of those keys that we'll use, put it in that mode to, you know, do damage on champions. Revision 0, increased damage versus champions 100%, so not as much as Vex, but still it's something. But Thorn, we knew the Kalos was coming. I'm excited. I like Thorn, 
and I want to use this again. Um, okay, one buff that they're doing is picking up a remnant can overflow the magazine up to 40 rounds max. Amazing. And then also the catalyst is adding 20 to range, 10 to stability. And getting kills or picking up a remnant grants additional range handling and mobility. This is going to be like a fun uh, hand cannon to use in PvE next season. It was fun. Catalyst. Prior, it was fun already. This is gonna, I know. This is going to make it even even better. Might make it a little bit better option to choose. Mm-hmm. Mm. The class glaives are saying I'm something gonna... about. I don't really care about it unless you care. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, they're kind of... Oh, eh. Osteostriga, though, is getting a nerf. They said it was just too good. It was better than a lot of auto rifles because of the... Um, the the damage bonus bonus scaler that it had when it had the poison damage. And so they they removed that bonus scaler. So that brings Osteostriga poison down to match the necrotic grip poison. Um, although it'll still kill miners really well. So I'm trying to imagine exactly what that means. I think it's just the poison. Just the more you shot it out, the poison will get stronger and stronger, but now it doesn't do that anymore. I think it's just, just more like a flat poison. Interesting. I think that'll uh I think that's good for Osteo though. I see yeah. it a lot in Crucible. I don't know how that's gonna affect the crucible side of things, but if it does, maybe we'll see less and less of it. Salvation's grip placed a speed limit on the d- detonation, something about Stasis crystals, winter bite, ew, gross. These weapons that I don't care about. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, but in the future, uh, Necrochasm, which I love also, will be getting a buff to extend the duration of the poison damage over time effect it applies from a cursed thrall explosion. And it will have a new catalyst called One for Thrall. So we're getting, what, a second catalyst? Which really? grants a moderate period of increased damage, range, and aim assist after you damage three enemies in quick succession. Damaging three more enemies while the perk is active refreshes the timer. This could be amazing for Necrochasm. I, I mean, people were kind of saying, like, Necrochasm's pretty good, but it could be better. I, they're going all out with this one. Now, it says far future, so oof, that could be my guess is even after Final Shape in one of the seasons after. Probably. It. At this yeah. point, we're that close, I would imagine. So, we'll have to wait for a while. Assuming we're all still playing after Final Shape. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Lord Silent. Thanks for saying hey in the chat. Alright, and heavy grenade launchers will get a substantial inventory buff. That's good. What does that mean, inventory buff? More think, ammo? Yeah, I think more ammo. They did kind of say that weird. <laughs> Next time, Bungie, just say more ammo, not inventory <laughs> buff. Please and thank you. <laughs> well, someone will probably say, well, actually, what it means is this. So let us know. Let us know. But it obviously has something to do with ammo. All right. Um, twid. Now we can go to the twid. Twitty, twid, twid. Give that pulled up. I'm working there was on that one right thing now. I mentioned in it, like previous, about uh, like one interesting change that I saw in there. Once I'll wait till you pull it up, though. Okay, let's just go through the go through it line by line, so we don't miss anything. Okay, vault from orbit. Is that yes, that's the one. This is out of left field. <laughs> um, I feel uh, Kato screaming, "Yay!" Because he's, I'm I see him. Well, I I don't ever use the in-game vault, but I know Kato uses the vault in. What do you mean the, the in-game tower. vault? Like the I use dim. Which, I don't. Yeah, ever but that's use... still using the vault. But now you don't even have to use dim if you can do it. I, I get what you're saying, but it, if they make it really easy, you don't even have to switch over a tab to dim. If you're in orbit, you can just go to the vault and pull something. Right. Yeah. All the dim's probably going to still be better because you can search for a weapon's name really quick. So now Ooh, I take right. back what I say. I'm still going to use dim. So this begs the question, why just an orbit? 
is there are they going to put something like an overlay on the screen where it's just all kind of empty with the ships? <laughs> I wonder why just in orbit. Now they did say they're exploring additional areas to give more freedom to access the vault in game for other releases. So maybe the less access the vault through the menus in activities down the road, but they said at first, it's only going to be the orbit. Who know. But Hey, it's a thing. I'm excited to try it out. And then we find out that it sucks because you have to scroll through a long list to find the weapon <laughs> you want. And I'll switch back to dim. <laughs> right. Okay. Ghost mods are changing. They're getting so much cheaper, pretty much every single one. Were they that expensive to begin with? Well, yeah. If you look at some of these combo detectors going from five down to one, wombo detector from six down to two. But the TLDR is this means that you'll have a lot more options for how to set up your ghost while keeping those high valued XP mods slotted. With the right setup, you can find yourself with the ghost mod in every slot. So I couldn't do that before i could get like maybe two of the slots especially if i was doing expensive ones so we can do more with ghosts so why not this is good Valid. which i always kind of remember that at the beginning of the season or like during the expansions and i tend to forget let's see what's on my ghost right now nothing because <laughs> i switched to a different <laughs> ghost <laughs> i've been I haven't really paid too much attention to my ghost, to be honest with you. Exactly. I kind of don't worry, you XP people and bounty people. I I already got hundred on my season pass bar, so it's not like I missing out or care that much. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. I should at least put on the one that can give you like uh, cores or whatever. You get a chance in activities. I don't know what they all are again. Certainly don't need the glimmer. Anyways, I think that's a good thing. Rahul, this is good, I guess. You can, you know, you've always had the ability to buy higher items for lesser items, but now you have the ability to break down higher items into smaller items. So, one enhancement prism, you can break it down into 10 enhancement cores, but you do have to pay some glimmer for it. I actually am okay with that because I seem to have more enhancement prisms than I can handle anyway. Yeah. So I think that would be a good change. Yeah. Wait, let me make sure I'm getting this right. Or am I saying it backwards? No, that's right. He can break down one enhancement prism to... F Wait, how come this is saying it different in the text than in the table? He can break down one enhancement prism into five enhancement cores. But in the table, it says 10 enhancement cores. I don't know. Material acquired. You have to look at material acquired, want five enhancement cores for one enhancement prism. It's the bottom one. Oh, okay. So it is that way on the table. I got gotcha. you. Yes. Okay. It's kind of silly the way they made this chart. Yeah. So I get the I was point, saying though. it kind of wrong. You were saying kind of right and kind of wrong. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's here's something that some people will like. And Ascendant Shards have been definitely easier to get these days, but you can do 10 Enhancement Prisms to one Ascendant Shard if you give 10,000 Glimmer. And before it was 50,000 Glimmer. So basically, they're just lowering the Glimmer thing, I guess. Which is good, because Glimmer is is a much needed thing nowadays. Just disregard everything I said and just look at the chart if you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Read the twid. All right, don't cheat. I mean, the thing is, is like, people that are cheating, are they really going to care or read this and be like, oh no, you talked me out of it. They're probably going to try anyways, and then they'll be mad or sad when they actually do get banned. There are the few people. There are the few people that maybe you're on the line considering it, and they read something like this, like, "Okay, I better not." You know, this the same thing happens in different communities with certain things, or like I see this in religion sometimes too, um, where people that are maybe like questioning things or leaving religion, someone who's like really hardcore into it, will say, "Well, remember what all the promises you made to God and stuff like that." I'm like. 
you know, that only works on a very small subset of people. Maybe the people that are like right in the middle and are still kind of believing, but like, okay, oh yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. But if you're already kind of like on the way out the door and you're not believing in all that stuff anyways, then someone saying that to you, it's not going to matter one lick, you know, right. <laughs> you're still going to do those things. <laughs> all right. But, you know, at least Bungie is saying we warned you. So people can't say that. Uh... Oh, I didn't know we were not allowed to cheat. I didn't know. I can't. I didn't know. I'm just a baby. <laughs> just a baby. And a bunch of cool pictures and videos and stuff. Oh, yeah. There's lots of them. Check out the one down a bit. Do you see the dog one? Let me scroll down. The dog one. You'll get it. You'll see it eventually. Unless you're looking at a different oh, twin. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> the one carrying the monsters. Yes. Now, is that obvious what it is to you? Because I sent it to someone else in a text because I thought it was cool, but they didn't know what it was. But to me, it seems obvious what it is. What, the whole get up? Yeah. But tell me if I'm wrong. See, I think he's supposed to be a rocket ship and those monsters are like the booster jetpacks on top. That's what I was thinking, like a ship or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it makes sense because the monsters have lots of energy and so they're shooting out the the jets right there but some people are like they didn't know that was a rocket ship costume <laughs> and they thought like is the dog just delivering monsters <laughs> monster <laughs> drinks <laughs> well i mean if they would have taken the time to paint the coke box into something a little bit different maybe you could uh maybe it would be a little more obvious the dog maybe the cook maybe the box is a butler costume and and those are the monster drinks he's delivering <laughs> Yep. <laughs> That's his tray. <laughs> That's his tray. Either way, it's kind of cute. Let us know what you think if you see the picture. Actually, the dog kind of looks disturbed. I wonder how heavy that is on the dog. <laughs> With all these cardboard masks that people are wearing. Yeah. There's lots of them. Oh, I do like that art. Looks like he's at an arcade or playing a uh, old-time Pac-Man machine. Yeah, but the way his legs are, it also looks like he's pissing in a urinal. I know. I, I thought that too at first. And I was like, wait, that's an arcade machine. Uh, sorry to say that, folks. But and don't forget to it. click on the S at the end uh, for your cat pick. Not a bad cat pick. And then the heart for a dog pick. And not a bad dog pick. <laughs> oh, they're holding hands. They're holding paws. Well, there you go. We did it. An episode in the books. Unless there's anything else to talk about. Any other live updates? No, I'm still messing around on competitive and just... Uh, some matches have been okay. Some matches have been, like, awful. Because I have not done any of the placement series at all this season. Yeah. And it's just something to do. Like, I don't feel like grinding out some of that uh, other stuff right now. So I was just kind of poking around in Crucible. And I kind of want to wear my mask because I think you need to wear your mask for some other things. But oh yeah, I'm gonna crutch on Lorely still. Nice, nice. Well, I little... may do a couple strikes after this. I don't know if you feel like it or not, but regardless, we'll close up here. Is it regardless or irregardless? It may be irregardless. <laughs> Look it up and let us know. Oh, but somebody's hey, somebody's wearing a Star Horse mask. No, oh, Jesus. I just want to know where people can find us. And by the way, you can find me now at Blue Sky. I'm going to start just saying that. And um, and if people need invites, we're getting invites all the time. So people, sign up for Blue Sky. Bungie needs to get over there ASAP. They need to ditch Twitter. They need to ditch X. And, uh, you know, keep keep the Reddit. The, I mean, stay on Twitter, fine, if you want. But go over to Blue Sky. It's really good. Um, and... It's still not technically fully open, but people can get in easily. If you're listening to the podcast, come over to the Guardian Hub Discord, ask us in general, or just look for a posting we may have posted in the tech channel. And Chances are there's plenty of invites going around, so you can also sign up for Blue Sky. Yep. I definitely have a invite still pending in my uh, thing. My I Blue have Sky four, four I can give out right now. <laughs> Holy moly. 
at least as of when we're recording this. I'll try to save some for uh, when the episode comes out. Uh, where can people find you? I mean, you're I'm a blue sky. You're on blue sky. It's our normal names, right? Yep. Sin media. Yep. X sin underscore media. Discord. Sin media. Crucible uh, competitive. Losing currently. <laughs> uh, next to this guy named Ricky Dicky Duda Gate Grimes. Ricky Dicky Duda Grimes. The hell? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> And you can find me as Kingsley Mac all the places, literally all the places, even on Twitter, where I'm probably going to be not using that anymore. Um, you can find our show a lot of places, and I'll try to get an account for our show, The Guardian Hub, on Blue Sky also. I can do that. I probably just need to set up another email address, another account. Oh, uh, yeah, probably. Set up that but, account. Irregardless or whatever, you can uh, find all the information otherwise on our lovely website, theguardianhub.com. The best hub on the net. Thank you, Sen. Thank, Thank you, Kingsley. You. Kingsley, you're welcome. And thanks for the people in the chat <laughs> that are listening live. And thank you, listeners that are listening to this whenever After you the are. Fact. After the fact. We love you so much. We'll catch you all again next week. Have a good one. Bye.